CTO of Asasta Ticket.pk, Mr. Mashood Rastgar, uh, who's going to be joining us in about two minutes. Uh, let me tell you a little about him. He leads the engineering team at Asasta Ticket.pk and he enjoys building awesome products and working with open source technologies. And he's also an active developer community member and he is also currently serving as a Google developing expert. And he's often seen speaking at conferences and and mentoring different startups. So his talk for today is all about, is no code replacing software development? This should be interesting. On and over to him. I will see you right after. Hello, and welcome to Zero to One Disrupt. Um, as introduced, I'm Mashud, and I will be sharing today on uh, no-code development. So it's an absolute honor to be here amongst the greatest of our startup community. Um, so let's dive into this no-code movement. What is it about? Uh, well, I got into this because when I heard of this, I had a feeling that you know I might need to change my job soon. So I've been doing some research over a while, and today I'll be sharing my thoughts here with you all. But before we go into no code, let's actually first talk about code. Today, the world runs on code. Every text you send, every website you visit, every screen you swipe, it's all driven by code. Code has had a huge impact on our lives. Everything from communication, banking, entertainment, shopping, Whatnot is all influenced by it. However, only a fraction of people can understand code today. Of the 5 billion or so internet users, only 25 million of them are developers. That's 0.5%. Only 0.5% are creating for this amazing medium. The rest of us are just consuming. Look at Pakistan, for example. 200 million people, only 350,000 developers. Now imagine, what would it be like if anybody could create software? Anybody could create for this medium. Everybody on this call, everybody watching this video could essentially build things and share them with others. What if you could write the next world-changing idea without writing a single line of code? We would have so many new ideas so many new tech businesses, solutions, and whatnot. It would unlock a whole new set of creativity that is within each one of us. And this is exactly what the no-code movement is about. No-code movement is all about breaking those code barriers, making it accessible for all of us to contribute, and making it possible for all of us to participate and influence everyone around us with our ideas. And no-code does this using a visual approach to software development. Now, you might be wondering what that visual approach looks like. We use this every day, be it our Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, or Excel, or any other tool. We have drag and drop, we have drop downs, tables, toolbars, wizards. These are all interfaces around us. Why can't we use these to build the applications or solutions that we want? And none of this is actually new. I have been making websites since 2004, and my first websites were built on something called Adobe Dreamweaver. And this was a tool that essentially allowed me to build websites using a GUI, a graphical user interface. I would drag and drop the elements, I would size them, everything would be in my view, and then I could go in the code and see how it was all working. And that's how I learned my HTML. And my favorite part, I would click on a button and it would deploy it to my FTP hosting. But the tools today, they are better. And more importantly, they're on the cloud. So all you have to do is just go ahead and sign up and start working on them. They come with ready-to-use themes and awesome defaults. And who hasn't heard of Wix here? I've probably seen their ad over a thousand times now on YouTube. So I've used all of these three tools, Wix, Squarespace, and Webflow. And I can assure you that these tools are super, super easy to use. 
But then again, I might not be the right person to say this, me, you know, being 15 years of engineering experience or whatnot. Um, so let me show you. Let me show you how these tools look like. So here's the interface for Webflow, and it's probably one of my more favorite tools out there. And right away, you can see that there's not much to see. You just see a website, and you can edit it. There is no complex tooling involved. There, there is no code. There is nothing. You simply go, click on the text, change it. Click on the image, drag it around. And you want to see how it looks on mobile? It's right there on top. You want to change something? It's on, on, the, on the other side. You want to drag in something new, be it a list or a list item or a button or anything else? Just drag it into the, uh, in, onto the canvas, right? So it has become so easy to do this that literally anybody can do this. And these tools are not just limited to static websites. You can build e-commerce stores using them. You can, and these tools cover all the SEO stuff, the hosting, the security, the domain, everything. So you'd have to be, you don't have to be technical at all. And all you have to do is just sign up and start building awesome stuff. And just like this, so we saw an example for websites. There are hundreds of tools out there, each one specializing them and in whatever focus it's built on. So an example over here is Airtable. Airtable works on unstructured databases. And for mobile app development, it's Bubble. Yes, you can make a native app using Bubble. And that should surely solve all the problems in the world now, right? Dashboards, we've got Retool. And the list goes on and on and on. Essentially, from here, you can see that using no code, you can literally run complete businesses without any code and complete tech businesses without having any developers and automating all the different parts of it using the vast number of tools available in the ecosystem. So that's like an example, a real world example for this. Here's a startup called SwagUp. SwagUp is a startup that is like an API for Swag. You go in, you choose a Swag package, and then whenever you have a new client or a new employee, you will simply send them a request and they'll send out your Swag. Now, this is a tech business, obviously, and it's not a small business, $10 million in revenue. And these guys are running completely on no code. So they have all of these amazing tools that they're using, Slack for communication, Stripe for payments, Salesforce for CRM, Wix we already saw for the website, Typeform for getting feedback, Trello for project management. And then the most important of all, Zapier. Zapier is the one tool that acts as a glue between all of these tools. And what does that mean? That means when I want to do something in one tool that needs to be entered into another tool, I use Zapier. Let's see how the Zapier interface looks like. So this is a screenshot from my account, and um, I use Zapier quite a lot. Uh, so back then, I, I used Toggle as my uh, time tracking tool. And what I wanted to do was automate my invoicing for my clients. So whenever I track something on Toggle, it should go into zero. That was my finance application. And then Xero will automatically send the invoice at the end of the month. And it will follow up on that invoice every few days. How amazing is that? So it's using these tools that solve small problems at a time for you. But when they come together, you can actually run complete businesses using this. So you can now go out there and you can start looking for tools and you know, you'll find many tools out there and you'll find some aggregators like nocode.tech or Product Hunt. Product Hunt has some really good lists on no-code tools. But eventually you'll realize that there are just too many tools out there and you need to have some guidance on where to start from. So that's where makerpad.io comes in. And this is a community, by the way, built on no-code. And over here you can learn about how to use different things and how to build different or build different solutions using the tools out there. Right? So if you're looking to learn how to use a tool, then go for it. Now, some of you might be looking at this and might be feeling a little bit uh, underwhelmed because you'd be like, you know, no code is fine. You can use all of these tools, but isn't that a little bit limiting? What if I wanted to build something custom? What if I wanted to build something like Airbnb? Can I do that? And the answer is yes, you can definitely do that. So let's see how that happens. So that happens under a branch of tools called low-code tools. And I'll, I'll just share in a bit on how that works. 
So here's an example. Here's a custom app. I want to build a, so I have this idea. It's been, a, it's been in my head for a while now, and I want to try it out. Um, I want this auto repair app where I have some users that are signing up on the web for, uh, for the service, and they sub submit the request there. And the, the app then goes to the mechanics, who then go around the city to these clients and service them, right? So this is something that now you won't find a tool for this out in the web, so you'd have to build this yourself. Now, can I build this using no code? So in order to do this, there, there are tools out there like uh, Amazon Honeycode and uh, Microsoft Power Apps, Google App Sheets, and dozens more, right? You go online and you'll find uh, many of these tools out there that will help you build something like this. How do they do it? They use the oldest no-code tool out there, and that's called spreadsheets. And spreadsheets, as we all know, I'm pretty sure everyone here has used a spreadsheet at some point, they are super, super powerful. Like, personally, I've seen complete businesses run on spreadsheets, their inventory, their finance, everything, right? So we've always known that spreadsheets are powerful, but what if we supercharge them? And that's what these uh, apps have done. So again, I've, I've been saying this a lot. This is all very easy. But let's go through a flow and see how easy it is to build a custom app using AWS Honeycode, for example. So like as a general theme, you'll see when you start off, you'll first be introduced to a, a selection tool where you can start off with a base, a base that can essentially help you get started and not start from scratch, and which might be a little bit confusing for these tools. So in this case, we could just choose something like a field service agent because that's what we're going for. And immediately, it's going to create all the tables for us and create some relationships for us. And over here, already, you can start seeing that I'm starting, starting to talk in technical terms like tables and relationships and whatnot. And yes, there is going to be a learning curve here, right? So here is a table that, that has a data that I want to store or I want to use in my application. And I can essentially link to other tables using references. This is something that we commonly do in software uh, databases. But what we don't normally do is when we create a relationship, it's not as easy as selecting it from a dropdown, which in this case it is, right? So essentially, they have worked around all of these tools and made it super easy to essentially build up these small pieces. You want to write some custom logic for your business, the business logic? Well go ahead and write a formula. And this could be as complex as you want, right? So you can have a really, very really complex formula over here. And we've all written them on Excel as well, right? So essentially taking the power of uh, Excel, the spreadsheet, and linking it with some UIs that are predefined over here. You can take these predefined widgets. And be it desktop or mobile, you can define that perfect UI that you want. And then you can essentially ship it off with a click of a button, right? And that is the beauty of no-code development. So all of this might be a little bit overwhelming. And uh, essentially, the important thing over here is that you can watch tutorials and you can learn all of this. You don't need to be a technical person. And you don't have to essentially speak, and you can have something functional. We're short on time, so I'm going to skip this one. And I want to come back to the question we start off with. Does no code mean no coders? Absolutely not, right? Firstly, no code is still in, in its infancy, right? We've seen some tools today, and you'll realize that they are limited in some ways or the other, and they're just starting to take off. And secondly, yes, it will impact some roles, right? Not the whole industry. So. And that's not something new, right? Like, this has been happening in the past as well. For example, take database administrators. Uh, there was a time when every database needed an administrator, but nowadays we don't need them because all of their work was automated. So their role has evolved into something that's slightly more different and slightly more specialized. And finally, I, I would like to leave you all with this. As tools get more sophisticated and we integrate let this click, all right. And we integrate AI and big data into them. Uh, we'll start to do pretty cool things. Take, for example, this GPT-3 API that has been going around, and somebody's built this very simple demo. And you can automatically see that 
in the near future, you would just write up a specification document, submit it to an app, and it will give you the solution. Um, but I would like to add that I think the future is essentially a, a future where we work together, where tools like this will help write all of the mundane grunt work that we do day in and day out and help us developers actually focus on actual customer problems rather than fighting with those little database tweaks or uh, writing some boring APIs for adding and deleting information. But the future looks very exciting and I am looking forward to exploring it more with you guys. Um, of course, unless uh, AI takes over and that's the end of us, but uh, for that we'll see. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mashoud. Thank you so much for that talk. And uh, there are a few questions that have come in. So I'm yeah, going to take sure. a little bit more of your time and ask you these questions one by one. Uh, so there's uh, one question from Mohammed Jabad Sheikh on Hopin. And he wants to know how secure and scalable the app developed any no code tools are. Excellent, excellent question. So security is essentially critical for all of these tools, and uh, all of them are very secure. And you're, you're looking at big names here, like Amazon and Google, so security is not something to take lightly. But more importantly, when you talk about scale, scale is interesting. For compute side, I don't think they're going to ever have a challenge. Like, come on, these guys run complete clouds here. So scale, in that sense, is not a problem. But when you talk about scale in terms of functionality or maybe even cost, that might not be something we might un fully understand. So that's something to look out for when we're using no-code tools. Right, all right, okay. Here's another question, uh, Sharmeen Ahmed. And she says, can Mashood elaborate more on low-code tools? Yeah, so essentially the, the latter half of my presentation was about low-code tools, right? And the main difference is that no-code essentially means it's very straightforward, only drag and drop but you're limited in terms of customization. And local tools essentially allow you to uh, do that customization, to go in, to build the things your way for your solution, right? And that's essentially what tools like Honeycode allow you to do. But it, that does involve a little more technical stuff. So you have to write formulas, you might have to manage some references here and there. Um, and yeah, but it, but it all works. You don't have to code for it. Ultimately, one last question that, uh, how relevant is it for Pakistani enterprises at this point in time? So no code is, I feel, this is the, the revolution that we're looking for, right? Every one of us are, are looking to build something. We're looking, there's a lot of energy in the community and people want to try out new things, experiment with new things, uh, be it e-commerce or otherwise. And now you don't have a blocker. Now you don't have an excuse, right? Anyone, be it technical or not, can go there, build their solution, show it to the world, get feedback, and take it on from there. So I think this is very relevant for startups, not just in Pakistan, everywhere in the world, but especially for Pakistan, where we have limited resources. And now, as a single person, you can maybe even run a whole business by using these no-code tools. So very relevant for our community here. Thank you so much, Mashood, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, family. Bye-bye.